Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Thursday, September 10th, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's a look at what's coming up tonight. It just pancakes. Well, pancaking almost like a precision enclosure. Presumably there were very few people in the Salomon building when it collapsed. I mean, th there were, I suppose, fears of possible further collapses around the area. I said, you know, we've had such terrible loss of life. Maybe the smartest thing to do is, is pull it. Uh, and they made that decision to pull. And then we watched the building collapse. The point is, if any terrorism comes, it's from this government. And if there was an outside threat like a bin Laden, who was a known CIA asset in the 80s, running the Mujahideen War, and whose family builds all the military bases over in Saudi Arabia right now, and sits on the board of Iridium Satellite, he's the boogeyman they need. This Orwellian phony system. We've reached a critical juncture in the globalist program. That's why we're launching Operation Money Bomb 2015. And with the money we raise from this, we will be able to stay on the satellites and get on cable stations across North America, reaching tens of millions of more people right at the time they're receptive and looking for answers. So join us this September 16th and 17th. We're charging up, getting ready, and going in. Let us never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories concerning the attacks of September the 11th. Malicious lies that attempt to shift the blame away from the terrorists themselves, away from the guilty. Well, it was that charge by George W. Bush that signaled to the establishment media that no one was to question the official story of 9-11. And that probably would have worked if it weren't for the Internet. And that's where we come in. And in fact, Alex Jones actually predicted 9-11 just a few months ahead of time. And we have never stopped questioning the official story of 9-11. Right, guys? I mean, that's what we're here to do tonight. Yeah. And, it, you know, here we are so many years later and still, we're, I can't believe we're still talking about it. I can't believe we haven't cracked the case, even though so many people have in the past. And so many people are now dead from the first responders on uh, other eyewitnesses. Mm -hmm. It just keeps going and going. The, the hijackers that are supposedly on the plane that end up alive right. in other places. I mean, there's so many smoking guns to 9-11. Or, or their passports just magically oh, the magic you know, end passport. up just barely charred, you know, <laughs> land on the ground yeah. after, after you know, airplane going Found into the tower. Found by a police officer. Found by a police well, officer. Well, these, these yeah. are, so there questions. are many, many, many conspiracy theories out there. And some of them are outrageous, but some of them are so in your face that you cannot deny that there is something up here. Now, I, I wanna talk about some of the things that, for me specifically, I recall watching it, and I guess it's because I didn't own a television at the time, so I really wasn't all caught up in the programming, but I remember looking and saying, where is the plane? There is no plane. So I wanna talk about some of the 9-11 anom anomalies, things that have never happened before or since. And you're talking about the Pentagon, or are you talking about- I'm talking about both. Everything. <laughs> so, all right. Pentagon, let's, I mean, we can talk about the Pentagon first of all. I mean, you can look at the pictures there. There's video. Um, actually, here's a clip that only aired once on CNN on the day of 9-11. It never aired again. An eyewitness who said it appeared that that Boeing 757, the American jet, American Airlines jet, landed short of the Pentagon. Can you give us any better idea of how much of the plane actually impacted the building? You know, it, it, it might have appeared that way, but from my close-up inspection, uh, there's no evidence of a plane having crashed anywhere near the Pentagon. The only site uh, is the actual 
uh, side of the building that's crashed in. And as I said, the only pieces left uh, that you can see are, are small enough that you could pick up in your hand. Oh. Uh, there are no large uh, tail sections, wing sections, uh, a fuselage, nothing like that anywhere around, which would indicate that the entire plane crashed well, into the side of the Pentagon. Well, they're carrying everything away in, in, uh, in garbage bags. And then caused bags. the side to collapse. Now, well, that's actually the cleanup the team right the Pentagon, there. Yeah. See, uh, the, the thing that gets me about that is there were so many surveillance cameras. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and the one they show you, the one they show you was the ridiculous. 86 of them? 86 cameras and yeah. not one captured the plane. There was only one video that finally came out later and Years you just later. see this big fireball yeah. and the official story is that that's the one camera that caught it and it just so happened it was a one frame and then the next frame and the plane we just happened to be in between those two frames. And you had people, I think Bill O'Reilly, I remember plane. watching him show it. He's like, look, there it is. There's That should settle the conspiracy once and yeah. for all. I think it was <laughs> yeah. Bill O'Reilly. They finally released the Pentagon. Yeah, and uh, it, that doesn't look anything like a plane. Mm -mm. It looks like uh, it looks like a missile. And it wasn't so, just Bill O'Reilly. It was everyone. It was everyone. everyone. Yeah, and yeah. It's They're still all told what to say. Chris Matthews, they all said it. They all yep. said, this should put the conspiracy theorists to rest. So these, we're talking the engines on a plane, okay? These are made out of titanium steel alloy. It won't melt at 3,000 degrees centigrade, but they were nowhere to be found. Uh, there's also pictures of the hole in the side of the Pentagon. There's no way a plane or its wings would have fit through. The, the wings would have had to kind of go back like this and dart through a hole. So, I mean, come on. There was no plane. It was a transformer. If I was a family member of someone on that plane, I would demand to know I would want to know what happened that day. Now let's look at the pictures from Shanksville because even on that day, there's a plane and it just crashed into the ground and under the ground, there was no debris left. There was on a the burn news, scar. That was there was it. a burn scar and a crater. And you hear the, the news anchor saying, well, it's just, they found nothing than the size of a phone book. So they found no bodies. They weren't able to recover any of the people. We never heard anything about that. Uh, and then instead they erected a huge monument over the site so that no one could ever dig it up or look under there. It was an invisible plane. Now let's just recall earlier this year, we had the, the Airbus German wings flight where mm -hmm. the, the pilot flew the plane into the side of the mountain, into the side intentionally of into the side yeah. of the mountain. And you can see those pictures there. There is tons of debris. There are bodies strewn about. Um, yes, you can see it does look like it's pretty pulverized, getting smashed into the side of the mountain, but there are huge plane parts there. It doesn't disintegrate. It does not vaporize into dust. And and so that right there, come on. We, that, for it's, it's months like, they talked about It's like about a bodies. bad episode of My Cousin Vinny, the laws of physics refuse to operate on 9-11. <laughs> I mean, so many things. Same just, with the three towers collapsing. Yeah, the <laughs> three towers collapsed right. with two planes, mm -hmm. and then nothing hits the Pentagon, yet it explodes. And, right. and then, in fact, they did find, there's a picture that you can see, is a little bitty engine, looks like about this big, that they mm -hmm. found. Yeah, it, doesn't, uh, it didn't even know, belong to it. It's not, not, not <laughs> an engine from a, a giant... A giant uh, plane that and that's so that's the thing. It. It's like repeat a lie often yeah. enough, and people will believe it. And right. so obviously the same thing with the buildings coming down. Officially, it was, you know, office fires that brought down World Trade Center Seven, and then we've had plenty of fires before and after that of buildings where they never brought the building down. If they did, they might have toppled to the side. N never in a pancake fall where everything is pulverized into dust right, except the passport into their yeah. own footprint so yep. that's that that for me i'm like come well, on and, and going into that uh, let's play a clip that I, I i found of willie rodriguez he was being interviewed by fox and they wanted him to recount his story and he says it right there there was an explosion and then the plane hit right and and then he goes and he wants to tell people about how there's a cover-up fox anchor is not interested in listening about that oh it's an amazing story oh yeah thank you for telling but not interested in like what you heard an explosion before the plane hit that's got to be, and, his, and he talks about how his testimony was wiped from the 9-11 uh, the commission report. So let's go to that clip yeah. now. I worked in the building for 20 years. I was the person in charge of all the stairwells of the North Tower. And on 9-11, I had the only master key that opened the doors that rescued people. This is the master key. They call wow. it the key of hope. And uh, uh, basically, I was a janitor. Like I said, on that day, there was an explosion on the basement. And uh, this is prior to the building got hit by the plane. And then the plane hit. And then there was a series of uh, explosions afterwards. And a person comes running into the office uh, saying, explosion, explosion, explosion. His skin was pulled all 
from his armpits all the way to the top of the fingertips mm -hmm. and pieces missing off his face and then it was total chaos. I started putting people out, out outside the building and went back inside three times bas basically rescuing people from the basement and then at the uh, third time I just went with the master key and I started opening the doors for the fire department so they could actually help people to escape from the stairwells. Uh, what a surprise, I uh, was right. one of the persons that testified for the 9-11 Commission and my testimony doesn't appear on the final report. Willie, I could talk to you until... 11 o'clock tonight when we go off the air, but we are, uh, unfortunately have to wrap it up. So uh, will you be going into politics or are you just here? I think people are <laughs> no, maybe wondering. You're no. just here because you'd like to share your story. Uh, basically what I'm doing is uh, telling the people what really happened on 9-11 because right. there's a lot of disinformation about what happened. Right. And number two, because we c wanted to call uh, people to do an outreach for the victims that are still suffering. The first responders, as you know, right. are still dying. We're talking Terrible. about 60,000 people nope. dying. Mm -hmm. I work in the building for a 20 years. A true hero. That's a real a true American hero. Right there. And Wasn't he are, the last guy out? Are you going yeah. into politics? Oh, yeah, guy. he dove under yeah. a uh, fire, fire truck, truck. Yeah. Right. to save himself. He was a 9-11 hero, hero, he hero, until he questioned people, the official story. Mm -hmm. He saved hundreds of lives, yeah. 12, By I think, 12 By opening the stairwells. Personally. Yeah. And then getting letting the yeah. firemen and in. And then there. he and then he became homeless, couldn't get a job yeah. after you know he was thrown under the bus. Because he was saying what he saw. Explosion, then the planes hit. How do you have that? How does that happen? Like I said, laws of physics don't exist on 9 11 mm. Barry Jennings. Yeah. Oh that yeah, Barry Jennings. Key witness to WTC seven explosions, dead at fifty three. This was a guy, uh, Jason Burmish uh, ended up tracking him down, and this appeared in the movie. I believe it was 9-11 Chronicles Part 1, Truth Rising, yeah. the, the testimony of Barry Jennings talking about how he was inside Building 7. He got the call when, when the towers hit. He started evacuating, but there were explosions below him where the sixth floor was gone. He finally was able to get out. He's walking over dead bodies, but he could say it better than I am, but he can't say it now because he's dead, and we'll get to that in one second. Here's that clip. I, I received the call shortly after the first plane hit. I got there, uh, I had to be inside on the 23rd floor when the second plane hit. Upon arriving into the OEM uh, EOC, we noticed that everybody was gone. I saw coffee that was on a desk. Still, the smoke was still coming off the coffee. I saw, I saw uh, half-eaten sandwiches. And... Uh, only me, Mr. Hess, was up there. Um, after I called several individuals, one individual told me that um, to leave and leave right away. Mr. Hess came running back in and said, we're the only ones up here, we gotta get out of here. He found the stairwell. When I made it to the sixth floor and, and, and the, there was an explosion, the explosion was beneath me. Hmm. Keep in mind now, it's pitch black in there. All the lights went out. So when the explosion happened, it blew us back. I'm thinking I'm standing on, a, on, on the landing. I'm actually holding on to a pole b above us. Really? And I had to climb back up because Hess is yelling, what do we do now? I said, there's only one thing we can do is, and it's go back up. Both buildings were still standing. Keep in mind, I told you the fire department came and ran. They came twice. Why? Because building tower one fell, then tower two fell. And then when they came back, they came back with all concern now, like, to get me the hell out of there. I was trapped in there for several hours. I was trapped in there when, when both buildings came down. All this time, I'm hearing all type of explosions. All this time, I'm hearing explosions. When they finally got to us, and they took us down to what, what they, they uh, called the lobby, because I asked them, I said, when we got down there, I said, where are we? He said, this was the lobby. And I said, you got to be kidding me. It was total ruins. Total ruins. Now, keep in mind, when I came in there, the lobby had nice escalators. It was a huge lobby. And for me to see what I saw, it was unbelievable. This big, giant police officer came to me. And he says, you have to run. I said, I can't run. My knees are swollen. He said, you're going to have to get on your knees and crawl in. He said, because we have reports of more explosions. Mm. And that's when I started crawling. And I saw this guy fall behind me. And his comrades came to his aid. They dragged him to safety. I'm just confused about one thing and one thing only. Why World Trade Center 7 went down in the first place. I'm very confused about that. I know what I heard. I heard explosions. The, the, the um, expl explanation I got was it was the uh, fuel oil tank. Mm. 
I'm an old boiler guy. There's always a fuel a, oil tank. It would have been. There's always a, some yeah. strange excuse for that. Now, Rudy Dent, the 9/11 firefighter who exposed this World Trade Center 7 cover-up, we're going to play a little bit of his report coming up after that. But he 